I think vault seams are one of the most important details on armor models. But why is that? Because when you think of it, every tank consists of massive steel plates welded together. Of course there are some exceptions, but in most cases they are held together by welding, and let me tell you, those things can sometimes look quite gnarly. In this video I'm gonna show you how to create your own sick looking weld seams using two part putty, which is in my opinion the best medium for the task. And the results are much better than using stretch sprue or lead wire. Let's start with some tools. To get your model prepped for welding you'll need a steel whirler, scribing tool, it doesn't have to be Tamiya but I like it because it makes nice white grooves, hobby knife, plastic cement, and then for the actual welds you should get yourself some Tamiya epoxy putty quick type. I used to work with magic sculpt for years but then I found this boy and wow, it's like really the best thing ever. I like it so much I bought a double pack straight away. It has two components, resin and hardener, and it will last you for a long time. This is how much I have left from the first half of the package after probably 4 years of use. Then some tap water, one big and one small brush, two styrene sheets, you'll be using these to roll the putty into thin noodles, and a toothpick and weld bead sculpting tool, which might look a bit weird, so I'll introduce you to this nifty little thing. It's actually nothing fancy, just a toothpick which serves as a handle, and a piece of soda can attached at the end, but it's formed into a specific profile. It should have a fine rounded tip curved into a C shape. It's extremely easy to make one yourself, and I think the video shows it clear enough. But if you're still not sure about how to build one, let me know in the comments and I'll make a quick tutorial about it. Let's now prepare the model for welding. High quality kits often come with weld detail, but it might be incomplete, boring, or you might destroy it while sanding the surface. Replacing these welds is very easy, because you can use them as a guide. Just line up your steel ruler with the existing weld bead and make a few passes with your scriber tool. You should never put pressure on the scriber during first few passes, the weight of the tool will be enough to get a nice straight line. Then you can enlarge it and now you don't need the ruler anymore, because the groove is already there and your scriber will keep a straight line. There are places where scribing tool will be simply too heavyweight, so in that case a hobby knife is all you need to chop out a small piece of plastic. In this case I'm connecting the weld line as it goes through the cross section of this armor plate. And when you're done, just give it a lick of plastic cement to clean things up. I also want to point out that if you decide to add armor textures to your model, then you should proceed in this order. First scribe in the grooves for every weld bead, then add armor texture, and then add weld seams. If you don't know what adding armor texture is, I have a video on that and you should be able to watch it if you click right here in this upper right corner. I hope it works. I also have a playlist with different construction techniques, so you can check that out as well. I leave a link in the description of this video. Some kit welds are recessed, which makes life easier. You don't need the ruler, just give it a few passes with the scriber and the weld will hold the line for you. Just make sure to once again take it easy from the start and add more pressure to your tool only when you get a nice sharp groove. It should go without saying that scribing lines in this manner isn't gonna look very clean, and it will be nowhere near aircraft modeler precision, but luckily for us armor modelers it doesn't need to. These grooves are gonna be filled with welds and are there just for that single purpose, aka so the welds won't be bulging out and to also make life easier because it's quite hard to sculpt a straight line without a guide. In some situations there's no well detail, no panel lines, just nothing but a smooth edge. Therefore no guide for you. In that case you simply have to align your ruler, taking the thickness of the scribing blade into consideration, and then very carefully carve the groove on top of the edge. Once you get a nice straight line you can put more pressure on the blade to enlarge it. And like I showed you previously, using a hobby knife is a viable option if the lines are gonna be very short, so you can just chop them out. Finally it's time to mix the putty components together. One thing I learned quickly is that if you mix too much, most of it will end up in trash, because it will dry faster than you can use it. 
So prepare two roughly same sized balls and mix them together. I think the most efficient method is to sort of twist them like a rope, then mix them together, twist again, mix again, until the white and yellow parts blend into one color. Now you put it on a styrene sheet, add some tap water so it doesn't stick to the plastic, and then using the other sheet start rolling. Don't use too much pressure, because you'll just flatten the putty and it might get stuck to the plastic. Instead just gently roll it into a nice noodle. Then cut a small part, put the rest aside and start rolling again. Thickness of the noodle depends on how massive your welds need to be, but from my experience in 95% of cases you'll need to roll it as thin as possible. Because if you think of it, it's better having no weld detail than unrealistically massive welds, so try to get that size correct and you'll avoid ruining your model. When you have that desired thickness, pick up the noodle with a toothpick and carefully place it into the weld groove. Then push it until it lays flush with the surface. There are cases when welds are bulging out, but these are more common on Soviet vehicles. Most welds are quite subtle and in 35th scale they can just lay flat with the surface. Another advantage of putty is that you can build up the weld line using leftovers. This is one of the many reasons why two-part putty is much better than pieces of stretched sprue, which is another popular material for replicating weld seams. Keep in mind that you should have your toothpick constantly moistened up with water so the putty won't stick to it. Just don't get carried away or you'll flood the surface and the putty won't stick to the model either. Another important detail is that once you mix the putty you have about 90 minutes until it dries up too much and working with it will become almost impossible because it won't stick to the model so you should keep that in mind and plan your work accordingly. Then you can start creating the texture of the weld, or in less fancy words, start punching it. Again, your sculpting tool should be moistened with water, but not too much, or you'll just tear the weld out. The same thing will happen if your tool is completely dry. Here's a small nasty hack. Just lick the tool and you're good to go, because... Um Saliva works better than water. Yeah. So the weld texture should be pretty packed together and you can actually decide which direction it should go. Yes, that's how much detail you can create with this. And speaking of that, I always keep in mind how the welds connect to each other. So in this case I first quote unquote welded the side plates and then welded the top plate to them. Might sound stupid, but if you think about it, it's truly really incredible how much detail and realism we are creating with this technique. Sometimes the weld will just spill out, because when you're sculpting, you're essentially just pushing some of it out. Then just take a hobby knife and carefully slice it off. This would look very ugly in most cases, but again, a few examples of Soviet tanks come to my mind. Now you just need to apply a small amount of water over them. It's not that you're flooding them or anything, but it's like you're making them smoother. Don't apply any pressure on the brush, because then you would destroy the texture. You can see how gently I'm going over them, and the water prevents the brush bristles from sticking to the putty. This step is not crucial or anything, but it's good to mention that you can make the world smoother. When it comes to some details which you have to glue to your model, they sometimes don't fit exactly how they should, even on some of those expensive kits. Luckily, most of these parts are usually welded on the real thing, so in our case it's not so much of an obstacle, but an opportunity. The small gap actually works as a groove or an anchor point, so the putty is gonna hold in there pretty well. And this is a sort of general rule, when you're applying welds into tight corners, you don't need to scrap anything. Just make sure the weld bead creates a nice smooth transition between both surfaces and also make sure it's not bulging out. And also also make sure it's not out of scale and too thick. If, of course, your references don't show otherwise. But one doesn't have to be a welding expert to realize a massive weld on a tiny piece of metal would like, I don't know, melt the parts that it's supposed to connect. I think the difference is quite obvious and also note the small weld over here. That's what I was talking about when I said you don't need to make grooves in tight corners. And the last thing I'd like to mention, but should be pretty obvious, yet it's still very easy to make this mistake, when you're welding, make sure to understand how the real tank was put together. So for example, here it would be unwise to say the least, to continue welding along this line, because that's the engine deck and those panels are held in place with bolts. 
Again, pretty obvious thing, but still worth mentioning, so don't get carried away on your welding endeavors. So, I hope you enjoyed and found this tutorial helpful. This model is obviously just a small demonstration of what can be done. I, for example, like to add welds even to small details and photo edge parts, but that process is less straightforward. It usually goes like, I add details to a certain area, let's say a turret, then add welds where they need to be added, then move on to some other part of the model and repeat the process. There is also one more type of welds that I know of and was quite common, but I'll make a tutorial on that some other time, when I'll be building a model suitable for that. Some welds can also have quite complex shapes. German tanks had pretty insane interlocking zigzag plates, so I might film my video on that as well. And if you'd like to learn some more construction techniques, check the entire playlist. There's some more interesting stuff in there. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you mates in the next one. Prepare two roughly same same sized same sized. <laughs> Prepare two roughly same sized balls and then <laughs> Prepare two roughly same same sized. Mm. Prepare two roughly same <laughs> So prepare two roughly same sized balls and balls. <laughs> <laughs>